Resolution is one of the most important factors in selecting a VAT photopolymerization 3D printer. It's what determines the accuracy, the level of detail, the appearance of your prints. In this video, we'll talk about some of the factors that influence resolution, including hardware like lenses and projectors, as well as software. I'm Stephanie Hendrickson with Additive Manufacturing Media, and I recently had a chance to visit the Technical University of Denmark, or DTU, in Copenhagen, where they are working on some different open source 3D printers. They've developed an open source design for a laser powder bed fusion printer, as well as a VAT photopolymerization printer. While I was there, I had a chance to look at their equipment, learn lots more about resolution and all the different things that influence it. The footage you're about to see was filmed in the VAT photopolymerization lab at DTU. You'll notice it has this yellow tint to it, but no need to adjust your screen. VPP uses specific wavelengths of light, usually in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum, in order to activate and cure photopolymer resins. And so in the lab, they're using this much more yellow, amber-toned overhead light to prevent any unintended curing of the material. All right, let's dive in and learn more about resolution. Resolution refers to the number of pixels available within a field, an image or a screen. The more pixels that you have within a footprint, the smaller they are and the more detailed your image can be. In a digital light processing or DLP style printer like this one, the image of each layer is actually conveyed to the material vat in a pixel grid. So the more pixels that you have available, the more detailed and accurate your print can be. And in 3D printing, we also talk about voxels, which are three-dimensional pixels. VAT photopolymerization creates shapes by projecting UV light onto a vat of photopolymer. It's activating the material and causing it to cure. In VAT photopolymerization printers like this one that print from the bottom up, the projector is sending that image in the form of the pixel grid um, through a lens, which here is magnifying the, the image. Uh, it hits the material in the vat here, uh, and that is what causes each layer to cure. The material that gets cured is the result of the software telling the projector which of its pixels should be on or off at any point in each layer. So the material that ultimately solidifies uh, coordinates with the number of pixels that were turned on at any given point. But pixel count is not the only factor that influences feature detail. Material curing is a function of both the intensity of the light and its duration, and so you can create different effects by playing with those two variables. For instance, maybe pulsing the light on and off in particular pixels. DTU has done some work on this. They figured out ways of doing grayscale, uh, partially curing different pixels using diffused light. So they're able to do things like smooth out stair stepping by partially curing uh, the pixels that are, that are sitting in the corners. The neat thing about this is that they're able to do that grayscale effect without any changes to the hardware. All they need to do is tap into the control of the projector using software like what they've developed here, and they're able to create that grayscale effect without any changes to the hardware. There are some other ways to adjust the resolution, the, the quality of prints that you can get out of a machine like this one. In this open source platform, the lenses can actually be changed out. This printer is using a 4K projector, so the number of pixels always stays the same. It's above 8 million pixels. Um, but by using different lenses in front of the projector, they're able to change the size of those pixels. So you can use a magnifying lens going up to 2 or 4x to increase the size of the pixels, making the printer more efficient at printing larger geometries, larger features, or you could use something like a 0.5x lens to uh, focus the image and produce smaller features. Or don't use any external lens. The projection unit that is installed on this printer has a digital micro mirror device, DMD, uh, that has a pixel size of 7.5 micron. DTU can actually raise the projector closer to the vat and print directly with the projector with no lens intermediary. And this is 3D printing, so there's a third dimension to consider as well, the layer height or the Z height. In this machine, DTU actually has two different stages installed. So there's a standard stage in the back um, that can get down to layer heights in the single digit microns, which works well for most parts. But they also have this additional nano stage that can do layer heights in the hundreds of nanometers. So that's for really tiny parts, uh, parts with really fine detail. 
This video is part of a 101 collection that we are filming here at Denmark Technical University. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about their open additive manufacturing project, whether for VAT photopolymerization or laser powder bed fusion, see the links in the video description. You can also learn much more about 3D printing in general by going to gbm.media/am101. Thanks for watching.